assure you that I will do my best in the second term and uh, we will work for Nigeria and all our peoples. Ensuring the best for Nigerians and its citizens, that's what President Buhari says he'll spend his energies on. My hope is that this ninth assembly and the party as well will consider uh, quota representation for women. Newly elected members of the National Assembly begin orientation calls on what is expected of them in the 9th Assembly. I cross-examine the witness. Like I said, I will do so to the best of my ability. Justice Walter Onogen's trial continues at the Code of Conduct Tribunal with the defense calling its first witness. And 14 private computer-based test centers get the big axe of the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board. Hello, good evening. This is the news at nine on the network service of the NTA. I am Joseph Johnson in Abuja. Also reading with me tonight is Kemi Oshin from our Ibadan Network Center. President Mohamed Buhari has restated uh, his resolve to put in all his efforts towards ensuring the best for Nigeria and her citizens. This was while receiving members of the Board of Trustees and Advisory Council of uh, the Katsina Foundation on a solidarity visit. State House correspondent Adam Musamba reports that the delegation was led by Justice Maman Nasser. President Muhammadu Buhari said a purposeful leadership and vigorous pursuit of public good is the only way to reciprocate the massive show of support to the governing APC by the nation's majority. The president described his vote-seeking enterprise in all the states of the federation as an eye-opener, saying the crowds that welcomed his campaign train were more than anyone can possibly induce. He said that clearly demonstrated people's appreciation of the efforts by his administration so far at national salvation, and this will not be taken for granted. I assure you that I will do my best in the second term, and uh, we will work for Nigeria and all our peoples. President Buhari was before his election the chairman of the Katsina State Foundation for 17 years, during which a lot was done to support education, healthcare, and agriculture in the state, especially for the less privileged. The Galadimo of Katsina, Justice Muhammad Nasir, who spoke on behalf of the delegation, said the Katsina State Foundation is grateful to God and all Nigerians for giving President Buhari the opportunity to serve another term in office. We thank Almighty God for what we have done to this nation by bringing you here to continue serving the people. President Muhammad Buhari also granted audience to the governor of Imo State, Rocha Sokorocha, who described his relationship with the president as very cordial, despite the outcome of the last elections in the state. Governor Okorocha said he was in the state house to invite the Nigerian leader for the inauguration of the various people-centered projects executed in the state. I've completed the construction of a new cargo airport uh, terminal warehouses and cargo sheds that needs to be commissioned. I've also completed uh, a new police headquarters and uh, uh, also a new prison headquarters in Imoste. These are federal government projects built by Imoste government. And with other land, landmark projects like the Just Supporter Court, the new Imoste High Court complex, which were built. So we have well over, over a thousand projects. Uh, verifiable to be commissioned. President Mohamed Buhari is a, is a great man. He's a man of wisdom, a visionary leader. And that's why you see some of us tagging along with him. He's a father to all. Be you a Muslim, be you a Christian, be you from the southeast or south south or southwest or not, President Buhari is our father. And everybody who loves him should project him in that light. Mr. Okorocha of the APC, whose senatorial ticket is still a subject of controversy and litigation, is serving his last term in office as Imo State Governor. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News. 
Now, to whom much is given, much is expected, is an age-long saying which resonates with the Ninth Assembly. In this regard, it becomes expedient that the newly elected federal lawmakers are given the prerequisite orientation that is expected to engender cordial working relations with other arms of government, specifically the executive. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports on the first of a week-long orientation held in Abuja. The orientation program for the Batch A returning members and the newly elected lawmakers for the 9th National Assembly took an interactive format with the leadership providing explanations to the questions by the legislators elect on the National Assembly structure, functions, parliamentary rules and business, other than the seeming politicking on who occupies what position when the 9th National Assembly is fully constituted. Uh, I think there's too much attention being put on the issue of election of presiding officers. I think there's more they need to do beyond that. But I think the most important thing for the members and, and the senators that members elect is to work ahead uh, and to understand the, the rules and the procedures that are required. Legislative practice and procedures in the National Assembly, motions and resolutions and other parliamentary activities are also critical in the discussions. Once there is this uh, consultation, and the uh, sharing of ideas, uh, there will be smooth uh, relationship between the executive and the uh, legislature. I believe that um, with this development, at the end of the orientation, we will be better equipped and prepared to hit the ground running. At the end of the day, the dividends of democracy will be achieved for our teaming populace. My hope is that this ninth assembly and the party as well will consider uh, quota representation for women. The orientation exercise is a conscious effort by the National Assembly to enhance capacity of lawmakers towards legislative practice for the sustenance of Nigeria's democracy. In Abuja, Kenneth Nanim, NTA News is advocating the inclusion of basic health care provision. This was during the budget defense session of the Ministry of Health before the committee's National Assembly correspondent, Omotala Omojala, has details. Hearing on the various achievements and challenges of the Ministry of Health in the financial year winding down, as well as plans for the new financial year, the committee noted a number of issues including definition of roles among the levels of health care providers and the need to place diabetes on the basic health provision list. The issue of diabetes is very, very, very critical. And if it's not already in the basic health care provision fund, we have to include it in terms of either it's a subsidized uh, drug or we make sure at least people, the vulnerable, they get it. The committee also sought for computerization of the systems in the healthcare institutions to prevent avoidable leakages. Meanwhile, the Joint Committee on Capital Market has advised the Management of Securities and Exchange Commission to provide details to justify the request for increased budgetary allocation it's proposed for 2019 fiscal year. Do us a financial note on the increment. Justify them. Pick the items. You listen to my colleagues. Uh, if we can do that between now and tomorrow, all the provisions, especially where you know there is increase, increment. There's something to say. And very big increment. Very big. One billion is rich. Budget Defense of the Securities and Exchange Commission will continue on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2019. From the National Assembly, Omotola Omojola, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has directed that the State House Medical Center revert to a clinic to serve the original purpose of its establishment. Permanent Secretary State House Jalal Arabi made this known in Abuja when he appeared before the Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs for the 2019 Budget Defense. State House correspondent Jideo Nifade reports. The State House Medical Center was the focal point during the two hours presentation and budget defense by Permanent Secretary Jalal Arabi before the Senate Committee. Okay, sir. And of course, it's because of what State House symbolizes to the nation. Arabi says the center had a total budget of 1.73 billion naira in the 2018 appropriation, with 698 million naira as capital expenditure. 
and 331.7 million naira as overhead costs. He explains that the total overhead expenditure released for the center from January to December 2018 is 331.7 million naira, representing 99.9%, while the capital releases on projects is 231.9 million naira, representing 33.2%. Chairman of the committee, Senator Tanjuma La, welcomes the proposal to make the medical center fully functional and ensure that members of the first and second families use the facilities at the clinic. As the chairman of this committee, I must make sure that all the requirements, all the needs for the clinic is being equipped to a standard. It was initially meant to serve the first, second family, and those working within and working around. You know, part of the challenges the then medical center had been going through was the overstretching of facilities based on the incoming patients. Right? That wasn't what it was meant for. But with this development, it's going to be really streamlined into a clinic that is meant to serve those that it was meant to serve when it was conceived up in issue. The State House 2019 budget proposal of 14.3 billion naira is slightly lower than the 2018 appropriation of 15.47 billion naira by 7.1 percent. Jide Onifade, NT News. And ministries, departments and agencies are encouraged to defend their budgetary estimates on time in order to facilitate quick passage of the 2019 budget proposal. It was a remark by the Chairman, House Committee on Banking and Currency, Jones Chukudi Onyeri, on the non-appearance of the Nigerian Export and Import Bank's management at the budget defense session. Abdullahi Aminu reports. The non-appearance of the management of the bank without any official communication to the Secretariat or excuse forced the committee members to ask questions on why and the way forward. Committee Chairman Jones Chukudi Wangemeri decried the situation, noting that members assembled for one of their key legislative functions. Obviously, becomes a major issue for us because there's nothing for us to work on. As we speak, we don't have the budget of next thing before us. We thought they would have sent this budget days before now, or at best, bring it at this budget defense hearing. The committee, however, resolved to set another date for the management of the bank to appear for the exercise, failure of which might attract legislative action. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. Meanwhile, despite shortage in Nigeria's revenue generation, the country is able to push its 2018 budget performance to 100% debt service allocation and about 66% for the overhead. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed mentioned this while defending 2019 budget estimate before the Senate Committee on Finance. As at 25th March 2019, the summary of 2018 budget released by the Federal Minister of Finance stood at more than 2.7 billion naira. Reacting to questions by the senators, the minister Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed spoke on the need to ensure timely releases of funds. This, according to her, could be achieved by reducing complexity of the procurement processes. The procurement processes is really hampering the effectiveness of the performance of the budget. And I really do hope that in the next assembly, the Senate will look at how to uh, improve on our procurement process. Building of federal field offices, which have been started some years back, and we are now concluding them. So we need to really comply with due process and then commit these resources that have been released. Committee Chairman John Eno advised the ministry to ensure adequate utilization of funds by agencies after cash backing. So let's see if actually utilize this money. Because if you release a cash back and the money is not utilized, then what you do? 
The actual 2018 budget expenditure by the ministry stands at 2.3 billion naira and capital release of 68%, representing almost 100% utilization of the amount released. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Aminu, NTA News. Away from budget defense matters to the judiciary now, the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogeng, has opened his defense in the alleged false declaration of assets at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. The defendant called his first witness at the day's sitting. Dele Atumbi reports. The lead counsel to Justice Onogeng, Adebo Ikaumolo SAN, called the first defense witness, Olari Waju Busari, who told the tribunal about the collection and submission of the asset declaration forms of himself and that of the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria in 2010. Olari Waju Busari, who is a staff of the Supreme Court, is the driver attached to the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onoge, since 1999 as a justice on the bench of the Court of Appeal. The defense counsel tendered in evidence the receipts of the payment for the asset declaration form, which the prosecution counsel Ali Umar SAN objected to on the ground that the receipt lacked revenue number, which made it inadmissible as the authenticity of the receipt was in doubt. Rely on relevant case laws and the Evidence Act, Defense Counsel Awu Molo SAN countered the argument of the Prosecution Counsel on admissibility of a document in evidence. Awu Molo SAN pointed the attention of the tribunal to three grounds on the admissibility of a document. They are its relevance to the fact in issue, originality of the document, and no vitiation of same by any law. The tribunal subsequently admitted the receipt in evidence. The tribunal also subpoenaed Teresa Nwafo, a director in the Code of Conduct Bureau, to give evidence following the application of the defense counsel. The tribunal adjourned till Wednesday, 3rd April 2019 for further hearing. Why the prosecution counsel spoke to newsmen, counsel to Just Turnogan declined comments, but gave out a prepared text indicating that the defense counsel may have closed its defense even when the second defense witness is yet to give it evidence. I cross-examine the witness. Like I said, I will do so to the best of my ability. I'm happy that this case is now going on. He has opened his defense and we are going on. Justice Water Nogan standing trial on Siskan Church on false declaration of assets. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. You're watching the news at nine on the network service of the NTA. The news returns after the break. Join us again. Hey, big head. I am sorry. Where are you? I'm at the bus stop. Okay, dinner is ready and mommy wants you to come home. Okay, I'm coming as soon as I get a bus. Industrial Training Fund, ITF, in collaboration with the Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, calling invites the general public to the official closing ceremony of the National Industrial Skills Development Program. His Excellency, Professor Yemi Usibanjo, GCUN, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will be the special guest of honor. Other guests during the ceremony include the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Okechiku Enelama, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Malam Mohamed Bello and the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Hajia Aisha Abubakar, who will be the distinguished guest. The Director General of the Industrial Training Fund, Sir Joseph Ari, will be the chief host. The closing ceremony is scheduled to take place as follows. Date, Thursday, 4th April 2019. Venue, Show Musa Yerado Center, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Invited guests are expected to be seated by 9.30 a.m. ITF, developing the nation's human resources. Suleyol Fred Chagu, Head, Public Affairs for ITF Management, announcer. Introducing.
Say new Always Cotton Soft. Its unique top sheet is as soft as cotton and gentle to your skin, offering you comfortable protection as you go about your day. New Always Cotton Soft, available in long and extra long for 250 Naira only. Good morning, Dad. Good morning. Dad, how are you always looking so relaxed? Because I have everything on check. <laughs> Great job on the new contract. It's because everything is on check. That's it. A toast for the new regional director. <laughs> Mom, Dad, what's everything on check? It means African Alliance. It means life without worries. Worries from what? Whatever matters to you, we keep everything on check with African Alliance Insurance. African Alliance PLC, with you for life. Hey, great news. Oral B Strong Teeth is introducing a new formula for long lasting freshness. And Strong Teeth as always, it just got better. Oral B Strong Teeth with new formula. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous, whether you do it for fun or for political gains. Real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Good to know you're still there. President Muhammad Bari has left for Dakar, Senegal, to attend the inauguration of Senegalese President Macky Sall for a second term in office. State House correspondent Adam Osama reports that President Buhari, who is the current chairman of ECOWAS, is expected to be the guest of honor at the ceremonies to be attended by other African leaders on Tuesday. The Nigerian leader being accompanied by governors Mohamed Abubakar of Bauchi, Nasir El Wafai of Kaduna and Tanko Al Makura of Nasarawa State were seen off at the airport by FCT Minister Mohamed Bello. The Acting Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu and other senior officials. Others on the presidential entourage include the Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Oyema, National Security Advisor Major General Babagana Mongunu, Director General National Intelligence Agency Ambassador Ahmed Rufai and other top government of officials. Nigeria is to further strengthen her ties with India in the area of science, technology and innovation. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Bunaya Onu said this when he received in audience the new High Commissioner of India to Nigeria. Justin Bem Oni reports. As Nigeria looks forward to work with India, the minister appreciated the capacity-building relationship Nigeria has been enjoying and hopes to further build up that in the area of biotechnology, agriculture, and space research development. Dr. Onu congratulated India for its recent anti-satellite missile test, which shows the nation's prowess in space science technology. Uh, you mentioned uh, about technology, you also mentioned uh, the peaceful use of atomic uh, energy, and then to be in a position to develop uh, technologies uh, within the country that can help us to uh, produce many of the things that we now import uh, from outside. The minister also received kids from the excellent neighborhood children's parliament who were on a visit to encourage him on his efforts to ensure Nigeria uses science and technology to facilitate socio-economic development. The excellent neighborhood children's parliament is a network of children from about 50 government and private schools in Abuja with the aim of inculcating leadership and citizenship values so as to enable them become good and informed global citizens. 
in Abuja, Justin Bemui, NTA News. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has withdrawn the accreditation of 14 private computer-based test centers out of the 712 accredited from conducting the UTME examinations. JAM Registrar Professor Ishak Oloyade said this while monitoring the conduct of the mock examination at some centers in Abuja. Olain Kaoju reports. 157,331 candidates registered nationwide for the mock examination aimed at preparing candidates for the unified tertiary matriculation examination. While monitoring the conduct of the mock examination at some centers in Abuja, Professor Isha Akuleidi said 14 private CBT centers were disaccredited due to infractions ranging from collection of more than the stipulated 700 naira for the mock examination by private CBT centers. Link test that showed that the centers do not have the capacity to conduct UTME and the fact that some centers conducted mock examination without jump authorization. For one infraction or the other, technical and some um, uh, deceit and thinking that they will uh, not know. So now we have about 698 uh, centers left in the operation, but we have redistributed the students. Impressed with the conduct of the UTME mock examination, Minister of Education Adamu Adamu says it will no longer be business as usual for centers that indulge in these illegalities. When they should stop and they should adhere to whatever guidelines is given by the registrar, otherwise the same fate will befall them. Some candidates who participated in the mock examination say the exercise has afforded them the opportunity to cover other areas of their chosen subjects. That's for government and um, CRS. I really need to put more effort inside. It will be recalled that during the JAM stakeholders meeting last month, the board said candidates without biometric verifications will be delisted from sitting for the examination. And to ascertain the authenticity of each candidate, they were made to turn print before and after taking the examination. Online Kaoju, NTA News. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has promised to take care of the 130 children of the demolished orphanage and re rehabilitation centre in Kubwa. Permanent Secretary Christian Oha received the children at the FCTA Secretariat on behalf of the Minister Mohamed Musabello. Shwaibu Onozeri Kubu, however, reports that the children rejected the offer of a new home. The children who were brought with police escorts to the minister's office from a temporary home where they were assembled after their orphanage home was demolished last week by the Department of Development Control had an audience with the FCT minister behind closed doors. However, the children rejected the FCT administration offer for an alternative accommodation, saying their happiness will be jeopardized if they are taken to an entirely new home. Head girl of the orphanage, Olajimo K. Lawrence, spoke on behalf of others. What they told us they were going to do was take us to another place in Guagwala that very fast is not an environment we are not used to. We don't know. So we are begged, we begged, we begged the minister that if they can take us back to our place, we'll be happy. FCT Permanent Secretary Christian Oha, after meeting with the children and some officials of the Social Development Secretariat, stated that FCT administration wants to ensure that the children are secured with necessary protection and welfare. With the FCT administration to ensure the welfare of these children from this moment, we we'll work with the proprietors and we also know what has gone wrong. Because most important thing the minister has decided to do is that to make sure that the children are happy wherever they are. Because as you can see, they insist that they should go back to where they were before and their proprietors should also be released and those who are taking care of them. The investigation continues to be able to find out how to get the children. The police will do that, not me. The permanent secretary, however, noted that while the children's request will be granted, the administration will ensure that necessary rules for the administration of orphanage in the territory is not breached. Shwaibu Onoze Yakubu, NTA News. 
Let's just bring you an update on our earlier story because a report just in says President Mohamed Buhari has now arrived in Dakar, Senegal, to attend the inauguration of Senegalese President Macky Sall for a second term in office. A strategic partnership between the Nigerian Air Force and the government of Nasarawa State, which will bring security closer to the people, is in the pipeline. Correspondent Naja to Tijani has details. Adding value to the various communities in which the Nigerian Air Force Response Units are situated in is part of the bigger picture here, as these two heads meet to form a strategic partnership which will yield epic results. They are charting a new course in peacekeeping operations in Nasara State we have already towns. Uh, allocated a piece of land beside the, uh, the airport. Uh, of a total of about 100 hectares. And should you require more land, Nassau State is ready to give you up to one or 200 hectares more without paying any dime, as the state has already paid the compensation for the land we are allocating to uh, the Air Force. With up to 300 hectares of land being made available by the Nasara State Government for Nigerian Air Force missions, it promises to be a game changer in the protection and deployment of critical air assets. And I also want to uh, thank you for the initiative of establishing a cargo airport which is at 80% completion. This is very exciting to us. With that runway of about 2.5 uh, kilometers or, or thereabouts, it can serve as a good alternative for our, for our you know, aircraft. It will not only bring security closer to the people in line with global standards, but will ensure greater effectiveness in combating insecurity. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. The All Progressives Congress has condemned reports in some media that there was a disagreement between the national chairman of the party, Comrade Adam Zoshomale, and Minister of Transportation, Rotimia Mechi, over the alignment of the Rivers State APC with the governorship candidate of the African Action Congress, ACC. National Publicity Secretary of the party, Lanre Isa Onilu, in a statement described the narrative as mischievous and should be disregarded. The statement said the APC national chairman's statement on the alleged alliance is unambiguous as to the effect that the APC's National Working Committee does not have any formal alliance with AAC in Rivers State. Now, this is without prejudice to any local arrangement that may exist, the party said. The APC national chairman, Comrade Adam Zoshomale, and the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, enjoy cordial relationship and uh, do share mutual respects, which will not be jeopardized by deliberate misinterpretation. This is still NTN Network News. We now join Dotun in Lagos for more news. Dotun? Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Lagos. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo says President Mohamedou Buhari's administration is taking practical steps to improve the quality of lives of Nigerians through its economic policies and multi-sectoral reforms towards taking the country to the next level. The Vice President stated this in Lagos while delivering the 50th Convocation Lecture of the University of Lagos. Jane Ojuku has the report. In his lecture titled Nigeria Rising, The Path to Prosperity, Professor Yemi Oshibajo blamed years of corruption for infrastructural neglect and the nation's stunted development. He expressed confidence that the Buhari administration's economic growth plan, which is already yielding positive results, will three its various components, including review of education curriculum and restructuring of the healthcare system, among others, ensure that the administration's next level agenda is not just a slogan. The youths, he said, have a major role to play, which underscores the need for their capacity building to function in the 21st century workplace. It will focus, the, the Enterprise Bank or the Entrepreneur Bank will focus on startups, on new businesses. And the idea will be to fund these new businesses from startup to the point where they're able to go on their own. It's very clear that 
already so much is going on and so many uh, technology businesses in Nigeria are able to attract even funding, not just locally, but internationally. Earlier, the VP had commissioned projects including a TED Fund financed academic publishing center, a medical center, a lecture theater, and a swimming pool for upcoming Noga games, among other projects. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku, NTA News. Nigeria has the required laboratory equipment to certify the standardization and quality of products before usage. Chairman, Senate Committee on Industry, Senator Sam Egu, stated this while on oversight visits to the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON Laboratory Complex in Lagos. He said with the operation of 28 laboratories, the rate of substandard products in the country must be checked. Abalade Salami reports. On arrival, the Senate Committee on Industry were conducted around the standards organization of Nigeria laboratories to examine how checks are carried out on electrical materials to ascertain their level of proficiency before certification. Other laboratories visited by the Senate Committee witnessed some practical demonstration usually carried out on samples of products. Chairman of the committee, Sam Ego, after the tour of the complex, expressed satisfaction on the level of work with a call on the organization to maintain the standard. In the issue of standards, you know, standard is something that uh, uh, we need to completely upscale at each time. So they need to be very versatile with issues concerning standards. This issue of uh, um, keeping standards, I think uh, SON also needs to market itself a lot more, not only within the confines of Nigeria, but in the whole West Africa. Director General Standards Organization of Nigeria, Usita Boloma, assured the committee members that the focus of the labs, which include life endangering items, as well as agri and allied products, will not be compromised. Like standard, it, it needs continual improvement. So our services and quality of our services should also continually improve to be better positioned to improve the life of Nigeria through standards. The DG, Standards Organization of Nigeria, also added that Nigeria has the biggest laboratory complex in sub-Saharan Africa, located in Ogba, Lagos. In Lagos, Aboladi Salami, NTA News. Nigeria's telecommunications giant, Globacom, says it is determined to ensure that African economy receives a boost through Glow One armored submarine cable and digital solutions. Executive Vice Chairman Globacom, Bella Disu, said this at the just-concluded Africa CEO Forum in Kigali, Rwanda. Amaka O reports. The African CEOs Forum, which had over 1,800 participants across Africa, was to ensure that the continent is not left out in the digital revolution taking place across the globe. Rwandan President Paul Kagame, who hosted participants, encouraged them to tap into numerous benefits of digital technology in transforming the African economy. He commended Globacom for attaining lofty heights through innovations in telecommunications sector. Responsive and accountable governance is so critical. Executive Vice Chairman Globacom Bella Disu explained that the company's latest digital infrastructure provides mobile money and artificial intelligence solutions. So as of 2018, across the world in an internet minute, 38 million messages sent via WhatsApp and 4.3 million messages sent via videos watched on YouTube. It's not surprising that the World Bank has found that a 10% increase in internet access directly correlates to a 1.38 increase in the GDP of developing countries. Globacom has over 40 million subscribers and has motivated women in contributing to the growth of the society. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. <laughs> And that's it from Lagos. We'll return to Joseph in Abuja for more on Network News. Assurance Challenge. Oh, thank you. But what assurance can you give our daughter? Everything. With the new look Ariel, I can even do the laundry. Prove it then. Okay. Let's make this day even tougher. Now, let's wash the cloth. With your detergent and with new look Ariel. 
you believe me now? Ariel, now in a new look pack. I thought leaving the country was the best decision for me and my future. I left for a better life. We were picked up by immigration officials and sent to a detention camp. I spent eight months in the detention camp. There was no food, no water. I saw people being beaten like animals. Some women were raped. Some women were sold as slaves. I thought I would never see my loved ones again. I have made the biggest mistake of my life. I have wasted all my savings. I have to start all over again. Migration is a human phenomenon which cannot be stopped. But if we choose to migrate, we advocate that it should be done in a safe, orderly, regular and dignified way, and not in a dangerous and tortuous manner. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. This is NTN Network News, and we are back in Abuja. Time to talk business, and Muplang Dakok is ready to tell us about the gains and losses on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange on the first day of trading in April. And that's true, Muplang, it's actually the first day in April. Happy New Month to you. Thank you, Joseph. Happy New Month to you, too. Welcome to Business News. The federal government, through the Debt Management Office, DMO, has offered for subscription savings bond for the month of April 2019. The two-year savings bond due April 10, 2021 is at an interest rate of 11.276% per annum, while the three-year paper is due 13 April 2022 at an annual interest rate of 12.276%. Both offerings open this Monday. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, says Nigeria and other countries outside the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, lost about $200 million annually due to unfair global corporate tax system exploited by companies. IMF President Christine Lagarde disclosed this while speaking on corporate taxation in the global economy at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, Washington, D.C. She stressed the need for new corporate taxes across the globe, noting that it may be difficult, but it is possible to create a corporate tax system that better reflects the changes in the global economy. And trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed on a negative note to begin the week and the first month of April. The All Share Index lost as much as 1.64% to close at 30,331.69, while market capitalization stood at 11.5 trillion naira. 1.724 billion shares exchange hands by investors in 3,251 deals valued at 3.678 billion naira. The financial services industry led by Wema Bank and UBA recorded the top trades in terms of volume, with Wema Bank trading as many as 1.4 billion shares. The NSE ASM index gained 0.30%, while other indices finished lower, with the consumer goods industry topping the losing chart by as much as 4.92%, and was followed by the NSC index, which went down 3.00%. That's business news. Joseph. It's back to you for the rest of the news. Thank you, Muplang. Thank you very much indeed.
Now, about uh, 28,000 students have been awarded higher national diploma and national diploma certificates of the Federal Polytechnic Auchi Do State. At the 25th convocation ceremony, the rector of the institution, Dr. Sanusi Jima, pledged to sustain the high operational standards and academic excellence, which has earned the Polytechnic the recognition as one of the best in the country. David Irie reports. A total of 28,325 students graduated from the 66 programs of the Polytechnic for the 2016-2017 and 2017-2018 academic sessions. The management of the institution is proud that Webometrics, an international rating agency of tertiary institutions, recently retained the Polytechnic as the best in Nigeria. The Polytechnic in the past few years has also started to acquire higher degrees. The council is presently not in areas of staff promotion and has ensured that salaries to staff are also not in areas. The federal and state governments are not leaving anything to chances as various training programs are now ongoing for graduates and undergraduates to be self-reliant in the society. The institution must keep providing the necessary backup to make our nation a better society in terms of developmental initiatives. Our students must have a change of attitude to imbibe the enabling values. The prestigious honorary fellowship of the Polytechnic was conferred on a philanthropist and famous engineer. I feel very elated, you know, I, I'm very humble. By me, the undergraduates, that they should always study their books. And above all, they should put God first. Seven projects executed in the Polytechnic by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund were inaugurated in Auchi, Edo State. David Irie, NTA News. Now, as the saying goes, health is wealth. So let's take some health stories. But that's coming from Ibadan Network Center with Kemi. Kemi, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, Joseph, and welcome to Ibadan. People living with HIV AIDS have advocated an all-inclusive health insurance that caters for all HIV care and support. Network of People Living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria made this plea during the fifth national conference on AIDS held in Ibadan. Adebola Ogulano has details. Research shows that the prevalence of HIV AIDS in the country has reduced from 2.8% in 2017 to 1.4% in 2019, with an estimated 3.1 million to 1.9 million number of people living with HIV in Nigeria, while on your state recorded 0.9%. On your state coordinator of people living with HIV AIDS, Mrs. Bukola mm -hmm. Alabi, in her mid 40s, hours. is happily married and blessed with children and has been living with the virus for the past 17 years. It is doable. You can have a child that is not infected. I have. I don't have any of my children that is infected. Declaring the conference open. Wife of for your state governor and others dwelt extensively on improved HIV response in Nigeria. And for them to be able to access this treatment, it has to be free. If not, a lot of them will just sit at home and that's the way they die. As a government, it's one of our priorities to make sure that we continue to bring down the cost of um, HIV treatment. At the end of the program, speakers urged the National Council on AIDS to look for ways to relieve people living with HIV of the burden of paying any user's fee for their treatment in Ibadan. At Debola Ogunlano, NCA News. Thank you, Adebola. Professional nurses have been charged to nose for ideas that can make them improve on their job for the benefit of the populace. This was the focus at the anniversary lecture of Oyo State College of Nursing and Midwifery in Ibadan on the challenges and prospects of nursing in Nigeria. Rofia Animashan Badmus reports. The anniversary lecture dwelt on the need for practitioners to be flexible, show care to patients, key into research towards building themselves up and taking nursing to the next level. Guest lecturer Professor Rashid Salawu emphasized on the need for nurses to be professional always and see their duty as a call to serve humanity. I'm looking forward 
for further development of this one to make it easier and worthy. And this day, the person worked for the sister institution known as Ohio State College of Advanced Nursing Studies, the best in Africa. A similar one established South Africa four years after our own has been awarded the degree. Director, nursing services in Ohio State noted that what nurses are found almost every area of the profession. He said all ends must be on deck to fish them out. In Ibadan, Wafia and Masha on Badmos, NT News. And that's all from Ibadan. We now hand over to our Kaduna Network Center, where Rukaya is standing by with more reports from that zone. Hello, Rukaya. Kemi and welcome to Kaduna. The military is strategizing to lead other security forces and stakeholders in addressing present security challenges confronting the country through synergy and contemporary techniques. The Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College Jaji Air Vice Marshal Lawal Shitsu Alao stated this at the opening ceremony of Operation Husky Bu for participants of Senior Course 41. Ibrahim Belugunda reports. The exercise which is aimed at broadening individual and institutional understanding of the role of the military, security agencies and civilian organizations in military operations other than war, emphasized on internal security and counterinsurgency operations. The Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College Jaji, Air Vice Marshal Lawal Shito Alao said, looking at dynamics of global security and dictates of current national security challenges in Nigeria, participants will be exposed to intricacies of conflict as well as its resolution and management mechanism. You will be identifying remote and immediate causes of conflict, and more important lessons to be learned from them with emphasis on how we can all better synergize towards achieving our common goal of peace. Director, Department of Gen Studies, Brigadier General Blasisi Adebo has said, Exercise has KBU is the basis for synergy to address internal security challenges in the country, especially low intensity conflict and counterinsurgency. The joint combined and multi agency approach towards ameliorating the various security challenges in Nigeria must continue to be practiced in order to be effective. The three week senior course has 261 participants from different military and paramilitary agencies, including foreign participants. In Kaduna, Ibrahim Bella Gunda, NT News. And Nigeria has set for herself a target to end open defecation and improved sanitation by the year 2025. To make this a reality, Environmental Health Officers Registration Council sought accreditation for the training needs of its officers from the National Board for Technical Education. Abdullahi Mohammed reports. Against a disturbing fact about open defecation and poor sanitation that President Muhammad Buhari declared a state of emergency on water supply, sanitation and hygiene sectors in Nigeria. To key into the chain of activities to be carried out towards ending open defecation and improving sanitation across the country, top hierarchy of the Environmental Health Registration Council have identified quality certification of its members as key. That translated into a partnership with the National Board for Technical Education, MBTE. The Registrar of the Council said the federal government has already begun strengthening the capacity of health officers across the country in line with its aspirations of addressing environmental challenges. The federal government has graciously provided these uniforms in the last three years free of charge to environmental health officers in Nigeria that is in good standing with the council. That is to say that they stand and ask us to go and regulate. And as we are regulating, they are assisting us. The professional body will give them the leadership of the team while we give them, at the same time, the backing. This partnership also allows the health officers, council, and the MBTE to carry out joint accreditation of the environmental health sector institutions. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. And that's it from Kaduna. NTA Network News at 9 will continue after this commercial break. Stay tuned.
sports now. Nigeria Basketball Federation plans towards a successful outing at the FIBA World Cup as David Dawarie remained a champion of the 18th edition of the Junior Tennis Masters in Lagos. Lumide Eguntala tells us more as sports update. Ahead of the 2019 FIBA World Cup in China, the Nigeria Basketball Federation has started strategizing on its training programs to prepare the Tigers for the 